buonasera come va i'm back with another review how many of you out there are blender types or are you juicing types i love my blend tech this is the one investment i can tell you I have gotten my money's worth and then some through. So my question is in the comments, let me know. Hi Cheryl, hi Angelina, I'm seeing you all popping in. I hope you're having a, an amazing Tuesday. Tickle me Tuesday. I wanted to share this with y'all. Hi Chris, hi Lacey. Because when I first started changing my lifestyle, started changing my habits, my eating and all that stuff, the first most important investment I made was with a blender. And I, I was willing to spend the money and invest in it. So I'm gonna be straight up, I got it on eBay, and I know I paid probably about 500 or so, maybe more, maybe 575. But because it was a, a commercial, and this is a silencer, see, chop, chop. <laughs> it really, it really, argh. it breaks things down so well, smooth and creamy. If you want to break something down, this is the tool. And I've played with other people's um, other types of blenders, and I'll be straight up. I like four sides to clean off. It makes it easier. It's more streamlined. That's just my personal opinion. So first off, this won't take, I don't know how long it'll take. I've got my trusty booch in the love mug. You see that love shining on you all? And this one's an orange juice, fresh squeezed with cinnamon nutmeg, right? Mm. Yummy in my tummy. A little bit of vanilla stevia too can enhance the flavors. Because when I make it, I like it with cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger. Mm. So, the reason I had to invest in this, and those of you with the cheaper brands, like the Hamilton Beach, for example, I can attest, I burned out two motors. That's when my dad was like, ah, right, you know? You burned out two motors. <laughs> I liked them because they had glass pictures, but I disliked them because they, did, they couldn't blend away, they didn't masticate well, especially if you're doing things like kale, Swiss chard, spinach, you wanna make sure it masticates, right? Um, so that it can break down and you can absorb the nutrients because otherwise your body may, it's its also an enzyme inhibitor, not an enzyme inhibitor, um, it's just, it's harder for your body to break down. We can chew, 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 but most people don't chew long enough to get the nutrients because our digestion starts in our mouth. And I don't know about anybody else, when I sip on a smoothie, just like when I sip on my kombucha, it like, I like to move it around my mouth, right? You know, feel the textures, especially with the smoothie. It's like, mmm, you just wanna feel it, right? It's how I play with flavors, right? I really like to get all my senses engaged. That's why it's sensual. The word sensuality comes from senses. So I like to engage all my senses. And I like it creamy and smooth. You can do choppy stuff too. You just gotta learn how to use your blender. And it does take a little bit of work because each blender has its nuances. And this one is the Smoother 13 model. This is an ICB. It's a K-Tech is the other brand name too that um, Blendtec also originally, I believe, started as. So when I first bought this, and I was very lucky because the man that I bought it from apparently had like a smoothie juice bar or something, and he was getting rid of it. This only has 4,280 uh, cycles on it, and I already have another one. I just can't fit this in my kitchen because it won't, it's not compact enough, and I'm kind of downsizing getting rid of things. So I've listed it on OfferUp and on, on Facebook. And I paid probably $575 is what I think I paid for this, is what I recall. And I, I, 
4,280 rotations on it. That's not very much. Thank you, dear. Good to see you, Amanda. So this isn't the best picture either because we all need to, you know, upgrade our pictures. So for what I, I mean, what it does, it's really good. I have had several of these different lids. There's different style lids you can use. There's the harder one, there's this flexible one. And again, one of the things I learned when I went to one of my culinary courses is that when you put this in here, which you can do with this to suction so that you can press it up and it won't come out the sides because I found that if you don't, it will come out around the sides. You take a, uh, a towel, like a face cloth or something, something thin enough so that when you close it, there is this little piece that pushes down but it doesn't push down enough. So you put it across and it holds it in place a little better. And it, like I said, it kind of creates that suctioning. So that's one thing you can do with these. This is the beauty of one of these types of blenders. The commercial aspect is that this silences it. It's still a loud motor. I'm just, I'm not gonna lie. I'm still on the, the hunt to see if there's something out there that is quieter than what I have. But in all honesty, I still like this. This is my go-to. I've been using it for years. I'd say since 2010. That's when I first started my journey in plant-based food. Now, the reason I blew out several blenders, the motors, it was because I was putting everything in the kitchen sink in my smoothies. I just said, oh, let me just put this, oh, that's healthy and that's healthy. They were like sludge. They were really like, they weren't easy to digest. And you know, it's even worse when you have a smoothie in a glass pitcher that's not broken down and you've just burnt out the motor. And then what do you do with it? You got nothing else to blend it in. <laughs> so that was an experience and a challenge and I had to learn through all of that on my own. Nobody taught me. I also had to learn there's a thing called food combining and you know, if you put too many ingredients in, your body's gotta break down more. Your body wants simplicity. It wants something easy to digest. And you know what? The best way to eat is really with our teeth. But a smoothie makes life easier. You can make, uh, I love watermelon gazpacho or tomato gazpacho or, you know, just so you can make it chunky. You can, you can create it however you like. So here are the things I want to share with you. Aside from the soundproof cover and a pitcher, there's all these little buttons. And each one has different settings. And what they'll do is that each setting will go for a certain amount of time and it'll graduate and it'll, each one's different. So for example, number one, I believe is a lot slower. It's a little longer, it's a smoother, but it doesn't go to the highest setting. I tend to use number three. That's probably because three is one of my numbers anyway, but I tend to use three because when I hit three, it starts out slow enough that it doesn't just, you know, like what happens is it's so powerful if you have it on the highest setting, is it will just go, you know, like it'll jump everything that's in there. And truly you want the liquid on the bottom. You want to at least cover the blade when you start out with these things. You just don't put it all in there and expect it's gonna work. The softer on the bottom makes it easier to pull down because it has this, um, suction effect, kind of like the the wind turbines of an air pro, uh, airplane propeller. So it sucks it in, sucks it down, starts rotating, breaks it down, and then, then you get your smoothies, right? So I had to learn all of how, what's the order in order to put, the best order to put in your blender. And I'm still every once in a while going, oh my gosh, I have to pick it up and I have to shake it because I like my smoothies rather thick. So sometimes what I'll do, is I'll make them thicker, and then I'll realize I have to add a little bit more water because if I add a little bit more water, it'll create a little smoother and it'll be a lot easier to, to uh, smoothie along, to blend it up, what what, right? So I use setting number three because it starts out slow, it graduates in the middle, and then at the, it, for the last, uh, I think it's a 30 second cycle, it, it just goes straight on the higher cycle. And I prefer that one, but then if you want it to go longer, you can you can play with the different settings. Um, for some reason, I didn't get a, a manual with this, but 
that's what I'm saying. You gotta go online and you gotta do a little research or you just like me and you just go full on it and just figure it out on your own. It's been the best investment I ever made. So, and I wanted to share that with all of y'all because maybe somebody out there is new to making smoothies and in the whole food lifestyle, you know, we're not, you can put anything in a smoothie, right? But when it comes down to it, you want the best blender. If you're doing a lot of smoothies, you want to invest in yourself. Whether you like Blendtec or not, this has been my go-to, it's been my favorite. Um, like I said, the other thing is, is the pitcher. I like the ease of it, cleaning-wise and sc scooping it out, because I have a, um, what do you call it, spatula, where it'll wipe down all the corners of the side. So for example, tonight I'll be making coconut yogurt. So then I'll scrape down the sides and I won't miss any except for the very bottom and then I just get my finger in there and look it all out anyway if y'all know what I mean because that's just how I operate. Right? So I like that part and there are other pictures you can purchase that I don't own at the moment but there's a bigger one that's a 54 ounce and it's wider at the base and then there's a smaller one with the turn top that allows you to make like nut butters and seed butters and all that, which is pretty rad too, because you can do pretty much anything and everything with these things. Um, and I like my food processors too, but I probably will say that this is the biggest investment and the best for my money because I use it every single day. It's very rare I don't. Se celery and avocado soup, hello. Smoothest, yummiest thing you could ever put in your body. So, just to give you a little bit closer up, and I still have the plastic covering the face of it, right? What can I juice or blend for headaches? Oh, honey, ginger. Go straight to the ginger. Ginger's like the best cure for so much inflammation, headaches. Um, I highly recommend that, Jody. That's my big go-to is ginger and fresh and just chew on fresh. And I mean fresh like it's translucent. You can still, you know, it's spicy. It's spicy, but it's worth every bite. So this is heavy too, by the way. So this is the blend tech, the art of blending. And so I've got, it's very simple. It's really not that bad. So a good smoothie for energy. Do y'all do hemp seeds? I'm a huge advocate for hemp seeds because they are a great powerhouse, as well as chia seeds. And those added to your smoothie will give you a boost as well. Um, another thing for smoothies and energy, I would definitely go with antioxidants. Yes, if it gets rid of hit, yeah, right, Jody. I'm, I'm, I'm a survivor. I still get migraines really, really bad sometimes, and it's normally because I dehydrate myself. If I don't drink enough water, that's one of my big problems, hydration. And I do tend to drink a lot of water. This is my fifth jar of this. Hi, Becky. How are you tonight? And if you drink caffeinated beverages, you drink kombucha, um, anything that high dehydrates you, you have to balance and drink more water. So yeah, smoothies are great, but you also want to make sure you're getting hydration too. I tend to intermittent fast a lot, so I tend to keep my mornings clean with mostly water. Hi Bjorn, how are you? Bianca, hi honey. So when I start out my day, I do my morning practice on an empty stomach. I, like I was telling earlier, I drink at least one of these first thing in the morning, sometimes a little bit more. And this is it's probably about 32 ounces, between 29 and 32 ounces. And then I eat, drink another one while I'm doing my practice. And then throughout the day, I'm drinking more and more and more because you can never drink enough water when you're living in a, in a warmer climate, especially. <sighs> So, hi Rosie, how are you doing? So, yeah, Rawr, everyone needs a blend deck. No, I'm just teasing. Everyone needs a good blender. Uh, this is just what I prefer and this is what I utilize. I have another one in the other room that does not have, in my kitchen, it does not have this, this silence cover. And so, if y'all know the pricings on these things out there in the market, if you're buying brand new or you're buying even another used one like this, they're, they're 500 and up. Um, and I even saw one for 1200 not long ago. So I, uh, the protein. So Tammy, I don't know if you know about protein. Protein is basically 
what your body builds utilizing amino acids. So there's been so much media, and I consider it misinformation, that we've been pushed to say we need protein, we need protein, we need protein. And I'm an O-plot positive diet gal, you know, like I'm a, I'm what they call the original meat eater. Um, but O-positive is, an, or O's, are actually the, the leftovers. And I say that from the sense of, apparently with blood, there's more types than the ones that we know about. So, going back to the protein myth, or the misinformation is the myth, that we need amino acids to create protein. The body makes protein. If you eat something that's a true protein source, then your body has to break it down into the parts to come back to making up the protein in the body. It's so backwards, it's crazy. That food pyramid, it's upside down. You know, all that stuff they tell us, they've told us over the years, has been total just marketing, really what that about, that's about. So when I was um, doing so much research, and you know, that was my thing, I have to have protein, have to have protein, where do you get your protein? Where do we come up with these questions? Well, we didn't make them up on our own. It's because we've been basically brainwashed and conditioned to believe that's what we need because that's what I keep hearing. It's like the record playing in our heads. So instead of protein, what we need is the amino acids. So going back to the question, and the answer is, da, 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 it's in everything that's fruity, vegetable. Uh, I am a huge proponent for avocados. If you like avocados, and by the way, fat does not make you fat. There's so many people with that other misconception that if you're eating avocados, that it could make you fat. No, fat does not make you fat. That's the misnomer. And by the way, an avocado is a fruit. Just like jackfruit is also a high fat fruit, but it's healing for the gut. And with with avocados, the beauty is it's more of a, a more complete amino acid complex to nourish your body. I have this cinnamon in here. Oh my gosh, I added cinnamon and ginger, and oh, it's so yummy. What are y'all drinking tonight? What are y'all eating? I saw Cheryl's making a smoothie. Anybody else out there making a smoothie tonight? And what are you putting in that smoothie, Cheryl? Come on, tell me. Hmm. So, hemp seeds are amazing. Pea protein, I know a lot of people are doing pea protein right now. Um, I like to keep it simple myself. I tend to pay more attention now. I know that when I've done what I call different types of cleanses, not fasting, because fasting and cleansing are different. When I've done different cleanses, I've noticed how certain foods impact my body. And nine times out of 10, what I've learned over the lessons in my life is if I'm not drinking enough water and something is high in sugar, for example, like grapes. I absolutely love grapes, but if you try to make a smoothie out of grapes, you're gonna be like, feel like you get a sugar high. You're gonna be zzz if you're like me. That's what I went through. And it turned out, my, my knowledge of, of experience, <laughs> I wasn't drinking enough water. So if I wasn't hydrating enough, it was like, I'm sorry, this is exactly what it is. It's like injection of sugar right in the bloodstream, which is why some people don't do as well with juicing, but it's a great way to cleanse. I like my smoothies only because I like the fiber and because I have such a high metabolism and my body is constantly needing something that if I have something steady, that at least in the smoothie, it's, it's got some stuff to work on to kind of keep it, but keep it energized and not sluggish. So I love chia seeds, I love hemp seeds. I don't do very much of the pope. I don't, I try to stay away from too many powders. I like to have whole foods as much as possible. Bananas are the bomb. I um, love my banana and ice cream. And I really encourage, if you can have pineapples, God love you, I can't, I'm allergic now. I developed an allergy over the years and I absolutely adore pineapples, but they cause what looks like herpes around my mouth. And apparently wheatgrass will do the same thing, I'm learning. Um, I'm highly allergic to, ooh, I'm seeing your list over there. Oh, there she goes. She's got all the goodies in there. Yummy. You can do nuts. 
for protein too. I love almond nuts, almonds, or um, Brazil nuts, selenium is so great. Women, we need that, right? Uh, you know what, Tammy? It wouldn't be bad to juice. I think there's a misconception. It's, it, you know, what type of diabetes do you have? Is it an insulin um, dependent diabetes or is it just because of foods over the years? This is the one thing that, that I've kind of recognized is that the doctors don't have all that, that knowledge. They only have the medical, let's put a, a Band-Aid on it, let me give you a drug. Um, so yeah, cuts up, yeah, exactly. That's the problem I have, Cheryl, is it cut, it started out on the inside of my mouth, it was basically turning it raw. And then at one time I had it on the corners of my lips and it looked like really bad. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, well, you know, Cheryl, it's it's also gonna come down to, you know, it's gonna take some build up. I know we, we talked about that. So I totally, it, over time, over time. And a lot of it's stress related, I'm, I'm gathering as well as sleep, right? So yeah, it's really helpful to know that sugar in the fruits, so good to see you too, Maria. If you're getting, see this is the, the irony, when I lived in Europe, when you look at the macros on products or foods when you buy them, energy is the word they use for sugar and carbohydrates, right? And so it's interchangeable and it's a misconception here in the States that you think that sugar is bad when you see it. It is bad when it's in a package product, but when you look at actual fruits, natural whole foods, their whole state, right, plant-based, you're talking about something your body recognizes. And if you mono meal it, you're giving your body something more, much easier to digest. I think that melons are extremely beneficial for all of us because they're hydrating and they're really easy on the digestion. And melons should always be done on their own. Um, I didn't even mean to do this, like turn this into a juice and, and smoothie discussion, but I'm grateful that you're asking the questions because this will help others as well. I never recommend, you know, just doing what I say anyway, but um, if you have a doctor, if you have diabetes, I would definitely uh, consult, but also be aware and do your own research. I think that is the most important thing you could ever do. Mono meals, single, mono means one, mono meal. So you eat only one type of fruit at a time or vegetable so that your body can actually assimilate it and digest it. You'll find that that will clean out any type of digestive issues you may have in, in your body. Um, I know that a lot of people seem to be contacting me lately about candida, a lot of uh, fungus, a lot of um, Air, air inflammation, see fungus, yeast, overgrowth, all of that, it's, it, it really goes deeper and usually it's because there's something that's been seething, something that's you know below the surface on, a, on an emotional level. I'm just gonna share this awareness that I have for myself and I've dealt with it for me. Candida is your body's overgrowth of the yeast, of the fungus, but here, I want y'all to understand, your body naturally has candida. It's called an imbalance. It's not that you have it and you, you gotta get rid of it. You have to bring it back in a balance, just like acid alkaline. Your body, if it's more acidic, will have an overgrowth because that's prime breeding grounds for an overgrowth. So if anything, you really just gotta gauge yourself. I really recommend a food journal. What are you eating every day? What, how's it making you, you know, feel? How's it affecting your mood? All of that's gonna tell you so much more than anybody who talks to you or you ask for advice. You doing the, the, the research by going within and going, okay, now I just ate this and this is how all of a sudden I'm feeling. Or for me, I'll feel stuff, excitotoxins in my blood immediately. Like I can feel it like someone just injected me. My blood starts going, you know, it's the weirdest sensation. But that's something I've become so much more attuned to over the years that when I have something, or I get a rash. I'm highly allergic to gluten. Wheatgrass will throw me basically into what feels like death for hours, everything regurgitating, and it's not fun, and it's not pretty. Um, and so I end up with a rash, bloating, issues with digestion, especially constipation, for sometimes months. I'm still healing from Valentine's Day. 
And then I've had a, a few other hiccups along the way as well that also in, introduce themselves at the same time. So I'm still working on that. And I really want to put this awareness out there that something I started paying more attention to in the past week or so, um, that most people don't stop to think, right, Aaron, can't drink milk. You know what it does to you. I don't need to go through the, the horrible experiences again to recognize that, oh, it really does exist. I've done it enough times. I've tested my own body. I've gone through my own experiences. Somebody gave me, I went to a live cell blood woman years ago and she gave me these pre-digestive enzymes that were supposed to help me digest gluten. She said, you just take this before you eat, you should be fine. I'm sorry, if you are allergic, there's nothing that's going to fix it. Don't try to mask it and don't try to eat it. Trust yourself, trust your body. And you know what? There are things that are, that are so much better out there. And really give yourself the opportunity to experience something new. That I've eaten so much gluten in my life. I grew up with my dad had a pizzeria. Can you get any more bread and doughy that way? Come on. Plus I lived in Naples, Italy. So I had all this pasta, all this bread, all of these, oh, yeah, beautiful, yummy food. And yeah, I can get those cravings like ravioli di zucca, ravioli con salvia, burro. I'm telling you, I can go down a list of all these amazing foods I've eaten. Do I need to eat them again? No, no, especially after what I experienced. So when I was given these pre-digestive enzymes, and I know I've gotten a little off track, I went to Italy with a girlfriend and we went down to Naples. I said, I said we're going to go to the best pizzerias because I've been craving a really good pizza. And they, I'm telling you, they have the best pizza. We went to a particular place. It was so good. And I like the Ortolana Rosa, which is basically the vegetable with the friarielle, which is called rabe in English. And it's, it's so delectable. So amazing. It's got eggplant on it. It's got red and yellow peppers um and it's just it's just amazing i just i can't say enough about it i immediately that night my skin was like my color changes i see that my eyes <laughs> heavy tired i had one of the big issues i had growing up was skin uh, my acne on my shoulders on my chest on my back all over my face people tell me my skin looks amazing I can tell you it wasn't always that way. And I was very self-conscious about it. So um, this pizza was amazing, but then went my stomach, then I had sausage fingers. I could, I mean, for me, I can tell the difference on my body. If my ring is, is like, I can't put it on, then I know I've got an inflammation. And going back to what I was trying to say earlier is inflammation is your body trying to fight off a foreign invader. If you in, ingest something, that your body has an issue with, your body's gonna create more white blood cells, it's gonna create this barrier, kinda like a lab, uh, kinda like when you go in for surgery and it's gotta be a clean room and everybody's wearing white and scrubs and everything else. When you are inflamed, that's the environment your body's trying to um, create. It was not Ezekiel, I'll tell you that in a second. I can't remember the name, but he posted a picture on the link answering the question about the bread he used earlier. Because that bread is really, 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 really yummy. Just saying. But I also know when I start eating cooked foods, y'all, I want more cooked foods. Because something to consider is when you eat cooked foods, your body constantly wants more because it's not getting full nutrients. Because the food, when it's cooked, it, it, it's lacking. It has less. Your body will try to digest it. Again, this also causes inflammation. Not saying you can't tr cheat and enjoy what you eat. That's the most important thing that you should ever notice. Don't beat yourself up. Be kind to your mind and enjoy what you eat, right? But when we eat cooked foods, all the nutrients, especially when they're overcooked, we're not even going to go into that subject. Even if they're cooked, okay, steamed is better because it might be easier on the digestion in the case of things like cruciferous vegetables or things like potatoes have to be cooked or steaming your broccoli and your, your cabbage or um, the spinach or collards or kale, things like that. You'd be surprised when I went and started eating more raw and, and moved into the plant-based lifestyle, I was less hungry because the, the more fresh it is, 
the more it filled me and I needed less of it. Now my big thing is I love big salads, right? But when you eat foods that are naturally in their natural state without the cooking, you don't crave as much because it satiates the body. But when you get the cooked food, your body's going, okay, I still need food because I didn't get the nutrients from the food and my food's still trying to process. It still creates that belly. It still creates that digestion, right? Um, honestly, Cheryl, I, I leveled out. I leveled out. I, got, I lost all the inflammation. I mean, every once in a while, like I told you, I'm still recovering from my stomach um, since I had the food contamination. And when I have that, it creates, like, I mean, painful going to the bathroom. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's excruciating. And I have to up my magnesium intake, whether I'm putting it on topically or ingesting some magnesium. I also started doing my diatomaceous earth, which we had a post in the group. How ironic, right? I started doing that again off and on over the past couple months, and mostly because I wanted to bring back in the silica. Um, well, and, and that's the thing. It's really good for skin stuff, and it's also good for clearing out any parasites. Now, my weight, I feel really comfortable where I'm at, Cheryl. I don't feel like I'm too skinny or too heavy, but I get people who tell me, and it's usually because they're uncomfortable with themselves. I've recognized this. And I don't, I don't hold it personal and I don't take it personal. A lot of times people will look at you and go, you need to eat some food. You don't eat enough. And who is that? That's not a reflection of me. That's a reflection of the other person and their insecurities. And even when I was still eating the sad diet and eating a lot of stuff that was making feel, me feel horrible, people would still look at me and tell me I needed to put on weight. And because I had live with chronic pain, your body increases the metabolism. Again, anytime it's trying to fight off a foreign invader, it's trying to heal your body, it increases the white blood cells, which increases the metabolism as well, which will make you hungry. But see, that's where fasting comes in, and that's a whole other subject. So now that I've gone off on this tangent, I'm over here just talking, I, I love the questions, I really appreciate it, and I really hope that I'm answering all of y'all um, I did squirrel off, but going back to the inflammation, it's really important that we recognize if something we ingest, if we're keeping a journal, a food journal, you can look at it and go, well, okay, write out, how's it affecting my mood? Do I notice any change in my eyes, like bags? Sometimes people talk about the chocolate, if you have chocolate. My girlfriend says it all the time, she'll notice dark circles around her eyes or swelling. With me, gluten would cause brain fog, Wheat belly, you know, eyes, I just always woke up tired. And I actually had been waking up tired for a long time, even until recently. So I've had to still monitor, and I'm still learning, because every once in a while I have something, and I drop my guard, and it reminds me I need to be more attentive. And it's not that I'm fanatic about my food, by the way. I am, but to the point where I know what works. I don't need something to trip me up again, which is usually me dropping my awareness and also not taking care of my temple because your body is a temple. And if you put stuff in your food that you're also beating yourself up about, that in itself is how you're digesting your food. So that's why I say if you're gonna eat and if you're gonna cheat at any point, you're gonna do something that you're like, oh, I shouldn't do this, reword it in your mind, hey, you know what, I'm gonna enjoy every morsel, every bite. Bring all those senses in and fully and experience that yumminess. Whether it's good or not, it'll be just whatever your mind thinks it is. If you're sitting there with the whole guilt trip, then your food is gonna process guilty, right? Ah, <sighs> awesome, thank you, Erin. I'm glad to hear that and let me know how that works for you because a food journal is key. I mean, I, I don't necessarily do it, but I'm very much aware and I do take notes a lot. I journal so much, I've got so much stuff going on, I still haven't written all my, my thank you so much. I have not even had a chance to write all the wacky dreams I've had over the past 24 hours that were just, wow, okay, I'm gonna have to catch up with that one. Hmm. But they always have a message for me. Drink up, peeps. It's all about the love, about that love, drinking kombucha, no trouble. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate you showing up. And thank you for all of you who share my videos 
and just, just showing up for yourself. I truly, truly value and, and appreciate each and every one of you. Hmm. Yeah, you know I like to be silly. I got funky hair going on. I mean, this is my hair in a ponytail flipped. This is the funniest thing. So I thought, you know what? I don't necessarily want to put it in a ponytail because it's a lot. It's so long. Mm. And I flipped it. I put it in half and I took the ponytail. And it's kind of like a rat's nest right now. Do y'all do it? Does anybody else experience this? Ugh, we're gonna have to do another video for that because just this alone, taking this all out is gonna be one heck of an interesting experience. Getting back to the blend tech. Tell me in the in the comments, how many of you own a blend tech? How many of you have a Vitamix? How many of you have a Breville? Or what is it that you have and how do you like it? Tell me your experiences because I like to see what feedback is. I think there's ninjas out there. There's all sorts of neat stuff. And I'm still looking for something that's quiet. I mean, I'm sure it will exist eventually because if I can think it, I can find it. Ah, uh, underweight. So be careful about what doctors say in the weight scales, but how do you feel is really how I, I would look at everything. How do you feel? Do you feel energized? Do you feel vibrant? Do you feel, you know, you're eating enough? Do you always feel hungry? Um, it's not about the weight. It's really like, what are you taking in and what are you taking on? And I mean this from emotional as well as, because this is all related. What we put in our mouth is related to what we're going through. And most of us don't realize that we reach for stuff as a result of whatever is going on up in here. You know, what's my distraction? Yeah, wow, you don't, oh. Yeah, that's a new, I, I can tell you right now, I was anemic when I first went in the Air Force. And one of the things I learned about being gluten intolerant and having allergies to gluten and wheat was that it, re, it keeps the body from absorbing the vital nutrients, hence the anemia. That's beautiful if you can eat when you're hungry. I sometimes am one of the worst people that I will just, I, I will just keep on, when I get engaged in something, I'll forget to eat. I'll find those moments where I'll go, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, I'll get to that in a second. And then I just keep trudging along because that's how my, how I am. I mean, I'm like constantly thinking, processing, doing. I can say that though I've learned to slow it down. Even last night, I thought I was gonna get more stuff done. And I'm like, uh, you know what? I'm gonna relax. I'm gonna take it easy. And of course I still was hanging out on Facebook and trying to catch up with y'all. Just saying. That's my other life. But, um, you know, it's all navigating. And I really want to hear what all of y'all find with the food journaling and how that serves you. And if you like smoothies or you like juices or if you like our recipes in the group, let us know because you know we've shared tons and oodles of amazing juices and smoothies and recipes and foods. Oh my God. Yeah. And we've talked about that too. We're gonna, we're, we'll have to do another segment on, um, on weight because so much of is, is really emphasized on weight. It goes back to, you know, media and all this stuff. Um, and it really is where you're at. I think that sitting with it, stress is the biggest one. If we're not sleeping enough, if we're not nourishing ourselves. So if you're underweight, it's really about what are you, how are you nourishing yourself? And a lot of it's gonna be, how are, are you being you know, you're not taking in compliments, you're not allowing yourself to receive, maybe you're not allowing yourself to nourish from the outside in, the inside out, right? From here. Just some thoughts. I love you all. I'm so excited. I haven't been going live, have I? Just since Friday. And this weekend was a very busy, wonderful, amazing weekend. We've got all sorts of goodies in store if you haven't been paying attention. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you're following me if you wanna get my live videos. Make sure you set me to see first. And uh, if this resonates with you, you know you you know the drill. It's sharing is caring. Just hit that share button, doesn't hurt. It's not gonna take away from anybody else. It may inspire someone just by the click of a button. 
might be just what they need and you gave it to them. What a gift that is, huh? That's how I see my life, that if I show up and there's one person that I've touched their life, mm, that's huge. And that, that warms my heart. That warms my heart. So I love you all. Bottoms up. Cheers. Mm. Reach out to me if you need anything. You know where I'm at. We're also at support at raw-authentic.com. That's all for now. Keep it raw, stay raw. I love you.